Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. And this is a new week and the month of November is fast passing. Praise God. And the Lord has said this month, he is releasing upon you the spirit of boldness. Now you see, when, when you hear words like this, not just for you to say, oh, amen, I receive. You take time, you meditate on it. Okay. You meditate on it so that you will observe to do according to all that God will require you to do. When he speaks his word, he is giving you direction. Now, what do you do with that direction? Focus and meditate on it. Praise God. And, and you will see how the spirit of God is surely going to help you. I believe God that this week he's going to guide us same way when I pray for this on this broadcast, I ask God for utterance. Okay, before I come up here, my, my most important prayer point is utterance. And the Spirit of God has helped us over the years and by giving such utterance. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread coming to me in Jesus name hey man I declare over your life this week you are going to enjoy abundance of supply in Jesus name hey man praise God we've been on the spirit of boldness the spirit of boldness and you remember our text scripture is from Acts chapter 4 and verse 29 acts chapter 4 and verse 29 and now lord these were the disciples praying when after they have been threatened not to speak in the name of jesus again it says and now lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word that was their request. Lord, just do this one thing for us. Grant unto us that with all boldness, so give us the permission so that we will speak with all boldness. Now, you see, you would want to think and say, okay, hold on. Um, is it not you that will be bold? Why are they not asking God for the permission they are not asking God for the permission to be bold. They are asking God, uh, please understand this. They say, Lord, we want, to be, we want to boldly preach this name of Jesus, even though they are telling us not to. But there is one thing you need to do for us. As we go out to boldly declare and teach in the name of Jesus, back up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, that's what they said in the next verse. By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. <laughs> so, now, why do we preach Jesus? Because he is true. Everything he represents is true. Everything that was said about him is true. Everything he said he will do is true. See? Now, when you know that this is true, for example, divine healing is true. Divine health is true. Divine prosperity is true. Divine provision is true. You know, sometimes it's important to understand the world that we live in. And especially these days. We live in a world where uh, today, for, for instance, a lot of people are exposed to social media a lot of people are exposed to things that happen that is beyond their reach but then brought home by social media so you see lots of opinions on different issues and you know sometimes you find yourself wondering or you find yourself tilting to the right or to the left a will say this or say ah then b will come and counter what a have said say oh, oh yeah actually then you know c comes again and reinforces a's uh, a's uh, point of view 
He said, mm, <laughs> where do you stand? Where do you stand? What is lacking in the life of a lot of believers is this spirit of boldness, truly. And it's lacking, see, because they really don't know what to stand for. A lot of believers don't know what to stand for. So you find most of them standing for what seems to be convenient. Or another group would just rather be quiet and just be onlookers. God has not called you to be an onlooker in life. He's called you to participate. He's called you to take a stand. Now, taking a stand doesn't mean you, you are up against um, somebody or you compare yourself with, with another person. No. You must be smart. And the only way you can take a stand, and uh, please listen to me, the only way you can take a stand is when you have encountered, I'm talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ now, is when you have encountered Jesus. What you have not experienced, you can't really take a stand on. Because when... When the challenge for that thing will come, you may not have what it takes to withstand it. See? When we say take a stand, when they just say, come and stand for Jesus. No, no. A lot of people have died that way. When we say take a stand for Jesus, we say that which you have, just like John said in John, 1 John chapter 1, that which you have seen, which you have heard with our ears, and our hands have handled the word of life. He said, for the life was manifested and we have seen it. Okay. Now John is saying, look, we have seen it. And because we have seen it, we are bearing testimony of what we have seen. Now, if you have not seen it, if you have not heard, if you have not touched it, you have no testimony. Another person's testimony is not your testimony. Yes, because this is the ingredient that produces boldness. You can't be bold about something you don't understand. You can't. That's fake boldness. Okay? Fake boldness. The same thing, you don't comment on a matter, on a topic that you have not experienced. Your comments will be unreal. Yeah, it will be unreal. You know, recently, uh, um, it, it was a few days, um, sometime, just some few days ago, there was this um, issue that was buzzing everywhere about uh, um, an apostle uh, Apostle Arome, he was preaching somewhere and someone's phone rang. He warned the people and then the phone rang again and then he packed up and said he's not preaching again and he left. And so there was this so much noise. Why would he do such a thing? Why would he say, why would he? Now, you know, someone was asking me about it. I said, I don't think you know what it is to preach. You don't know. Now, a lot of people know how to talk. It's different. So let me not even use the word preach. I think I'll use the word minister. A lot of people don't know what it is to minister. It depends on the level, even when it comes to ministry. It depends on the level of ministry that you, you give, okay? Now, some people um, prepare for their ministration, okay? And they, they do all their study and they write their notes and all that. And then they go to the stage and then they just deliver, okay? They deliver, they, they read what they have written. Now, there are some others who completely depend on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There are those who completely depend on the Holy Spirit. They depend on Him for which, they, you see, now they may study, okay? But while they climb up to minister, they don't take their notes and are minishing word for word from their notes. They, even if they have notes, they still depend on the Holy Spirit to communicate his mind to the people. But that's real ministry. That's real ministry. And you can't do that if you're not called. Okay. Now, when you're ministering like that, see, I've always told you this, the, 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 the voice of the Holy Spirit is the voice of the Spirit, okay? Now, demons, devil, the Holy Spirit, they sound alike in terms of hearing, okay? 
Now, it is when you go deeper to understand the meaning of the sound, you can differentiate who's talking. Now, that's why sometimes, I think I shared this a few days ago, last week or so. Sometimes people minister under the influence of demonic spirits without knowing. Now, other people minister through familiar spirits without knowing. Now, they don't know. They don't, they did not like they give themselves over to say, I want familiar spirit, come and help me minister. No, they sincerely want to minister. So they spend time praying or they spend time fasting. And I've always said, this. now there are things you will never know except through experience. And, and when I say by experience, the Holy Ghost teaching you. You know, so, okay, like I said, I was standing somewhere, I said, you don't know what it is to minister. You don't. When you know what it is to minister, then you will know what distractions are. And a minister who wants to be accurate with the Spirit of God, Distraction is his greatest problem. See, when he's communicating God's word, this the slightest distraction can throw him off balance. Now, then there is another thing about how you handle distractions in ministry. Now, that's where our difference is coming, okay? But you see that distraction, a true minister, that is his greatest enemy. A, the ringing of a phone can throw a minister off balance, completely off balance. Sometimes even somebody shouting can throw a minister off balance. Now that's why sometimes you hear some people say, please, I don't want anybody walking around. Everybody sit down. Why? Not just because they like order. They are dealing with their flow. The moment that flow is cut off, hey, he's he's naked. He feels he feels naked, like I'm making a fool of myself. You see, sometimes you don't understand that ministry is done by faith. Now, like I said, the way we now handle those distractions now may tell of our own kind of personality. Please understand what I'm telling you. Okay. If someone is a disciplinarian, for example, you love to discipline people. You love to um, deal with people. You know that kind of thing. Now, you will take some drastic actions. And, and so somebody like that can say, I'm shutting down everything and I'm walking away. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Or that's what the Holy Spirit is asking you to do. Not, not necessarily. Another person will say, um, was, another person will go, um, okay, everybody keep quiet. Now let's deal with this issue. And then he'll take the next five minutes and deal with that issue. And after dealing with that issue, he may raise a song. Okay. He has brought order. Then he will raise a song. And why is he raising a song? He's raising a song to see how he can connect again. Now that time he's dealing with that issue. He's dealing with that issue by himself. Because the unction has been cut off. Now he wants to restore order. Okay. And so he finished addressing that issue, setting the place in order. And now he wants to connect back. He can raise a song. Or sometimes he can say, everybody pray in the spirit. And they'll be praying in the spirit and praying in the spirit and praying in the spirit. Then the flow will come back. And then he continues. Okay. Now I said, that depends on who is dealing with the situation then there is a third part because this thing i've got to share all parts to you so that you understand there is a third part and now i've not seen um pastor uh, apostle arome share the particular reason why he walked off the altar or the pulpit that day okay but there is a third part and, I, and i'm sharing all these things from experience because when something, you know, I said, if you've not experienced something, you can't talk about it. You don't even know what to talk about. The third part is the very funny one. And in, if I'm in that kind of situation, I may behave like that. And what is that? Out of relationship, someone invites you to come minister for him. Okay. And I say, oh, I'll come. I mean, that's your friend. That's someone you 
you you have a relationship with, or whatever reason you accept to go now that's not necessarily because you have heard the holy ghost speak to you to go you understand what i'm saying so now you're preparing for that meeting why you're preparing for that meeting you're not just picking up the right signals you're not just getting the flow there are times it happens that in many times it happens that way you're praying concerning a meeting and um up until the time you are to leave for the meeting you hear nothing then you get to the meeting it has happened severally you know the moment you climb up the pulpit the unction comes and you just know what to teach about previously you know nothing there are times even when you prepare you feel okay i know what i'm going to share you climb up that pulpit completely everything changes but then you know there is a flow then there is the part where i've given my word the holy spirit have not said don't go he has not said go <laughs> but then he has not specifically given me a word so i begin to search my heart depending on the kind of meeting that you you're dealing with if it's a leadership meeting then you know that okay it's my job to inspire these people on, on how to love god better and serve god and be diligent in their work now those are the thoughts that will be flowing through your mind while it's flowing through your mind you're pick, trying to pick what exactly the holy spirit would want to so you go for that meeting you start ministering you really have not picked the unction okay and then something goes off automatically you're thinking maybe i'm not even supposed to be here why because now you the holy ghost have not specifically given you a word if he has then you know that you have to fight to deliver that word but if he hasn't and then while you're talking you're waiting for him hoping that why you go on that's like starting in the flesh and while you start in the flesh you are still waiting for him why because he did not say don't go please understand this and then for example if you watch that video it happened and then he warns them then he said something if it happens the second time i will leave and then it happened the second time i'm telling you the truth if i'm in that kind of situation i'll pack my bible and leave that's if it's if it happened in this thoughts angle you understand what i'm saying whereby you've not specifically heard the word tell you what to preach or tell you to go to that place even though he didn't say don't go okay now at that point you're waiting for him to come at the slightest opportunity you feel he's not coming you want to leave that place <laughs> now these are spiritual things a lot of people don't understand so they just come online and start talking all kinds of things please be wary be wary of such go and experience jesus for yourself and before you speak about the matter i can speak to you about this because i know what it takes i know what it is i've been in situations like that like i said we may handle things differently but you see that distracting thing is real <laughs> it's, got, it's real don't 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 let people cajole you into um, you know like like young ministers for example you look at they say this thing is not nice so wait until you get there then you would understand okay now i don't like ministers being extreme okay there must be a, a kind of balance but then when it comes to obedience to a command from god you better be extreme <laughs> yes because you're going to give account unto the lord so that's why i said in a situation like that if god have you know god have given you a word now there are way, different ways god gives you a word for a meeting okay if i can be preparing for a meeting and god while i'm preparing i, I will just hear myself while praying i'll just hear myself say a woman is being healed of so so and so you know or sometimes i see myself going to lay hands on somebody on a red shirt you know and then now while i'm preparing i see those things so now i know that these are the things god wants me to do in that meeting now when i come to minister and then a distraction hits me now i'll know this is the devil and then he wants to attack me from delivering what god has sent me to deliver i will not take it out on the people i'll take it out on him so i'll deal with that distraction so that i can now in that case 
you're going to answer to God if you walk off that stage, irrespective of what happens. You would rather take the, and sometimes taking that discipline may even be telling somebody to walk out of a place. Or sometimes casting out a devil. Yes. Because a demon can be doing that. Oh, yes. <laughs> God. Yes. A demon can be responsible for that. They're like, let me, let me distract. He knows what will get you offended. So he tries to throw it at you. Now, you know it's not the innocent people. It's one fellow. So you look at the first, you want to know, am I dealing with a demonic influence here? Or am I dealing with a foolish human influence? <laughs> if it's a foolish human influence, you observe, if I take one person out of this meeting, because I can see where the problem is coming from. If I silence that person or take that person out of that meeting, we're going to have order. So you do that. Now, even if you do that, some people say, oh, it's not right. Why would you send somebody out of your meeting? And can the person's soul be saved? There is, there is no, it's not, hey, come in, it's not every soul that will be saved. The earlier you understand that, the better. Praise God. But what am I sharing with you today? Be bold to do what you know is right. And don't, don't, don't sit down and, and try to explain yourself and explain yourself. No, sir. Be bold to do what you know is right. And don't be rash into conclusions. Don't, don't just jump into conclusions and say, this is what I'll do. Because this person did it, I'll do it also. No. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Be bold. Be bold. Receive the spirit of boldness today. Receive the spirit of boldness today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.